What's good, YouTube? DM Gaming here, guys. Hope everybody's having an awesome morning, afternoon, evening, night. Whenever it is that you're watching this video, guys, SMU, man, the rebuild. So I've, I've streamed a lot of my season, and I ended up playing the rest of the season offline yesterday or off stream, quote unquote. And look at what happened in just my second season. All right. So the first season, we went nine and four. We lost four games. We lost to Florida State, BYU, TCU, and I honestly can't remember who the other loss was to, but this year, y'all saw it on stream the other day, uh, we we beat the stuffing out of Texas A&M. Uh, I switched to the Veer and Shoot playbook because I now have faster receivers, and oh my gosh, the production is insane. Mind you, I've been playing on all american difficulty maybe you know i say it's time to move up to heisman however i will say this that you know just because you blow out a few teams doesn't mean that you're a great team because i wish i could go back and look at my schedule from last year we had a close game with north carolina who was five and three at the time you know sometimes you get into these games and your offense is just clicking and firing on all cylinders and sometimes you get into a game and that's just not the case especially when you're throwing a lot of interceptions like i do i literally threw about 30 interceptions so you see up there number one smu mustangs we won the national championship against georgia in a close game i think we won by maybe seven maybe two touchdowns it, it was closer than what you think though um they started out ahead 10 to 3 in the first quarter and then they put up 14 we put up 14 so they went into halftime ahead by seven so i wanted to show this uh the end results of all of that uh even in drafting guys preston stone guys yes so i'm losing my star quarterback he was ended up being a 93 overall First round draft pick, man. It's so crazy because he went off. And then Jordan Hudson won the Heisman Trophy two years in a row. And, and it surprised me in the first year he won it. We went nine and four. I was running Texas Playbook and I used a lot of RPOs and um, I used a lot of um, wide receiver sweeps, jet plays and stuff like that. And But it, the difference was this year, I actually had three guys racing for the Heisman. My two wide receivers, two of my wide receivers, and Preston Stone ended up coming in there late. He threw for, <laughs> get this guys, 89 touchdowns. I know, video game-like numbers. There were several teams that we beat. 80. I put up 82 times. Uh, I put up 70, like four times maybe. And yeah, I know you're going to see that and say, yeah, DM is probably time to upgrade the difficulty. But I'm telling you, man, once I got to the playoffs, I had a very close game with Ohio State. Uh, we blew out Texas Tech. I had a very close game with Georgia. It's just the caliber of team that we are, you know, and the game doesn't sub out your starters like that. If they do, it's in the last few minutes. Mass substitutions would be greatly needed for this game, uh, greatly requested a for this game but needless to say guys we we had a good draft we had three guys go in the top three rounds and then two guys in the sixth round two guys in the seventh round and so i wanted to show y'all let's go go look at the stats man go we, we need to look at the stats from this past season and you're gonna see look at that preston stone on 7500 passing yards and guys they do count your playoff games as well in this he was 257 for 432. We slung the ball a lot. 96 touchdowns. This is unreal, man. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I played on all American difficulty. Guys, I might need to do a playbook review of the Viren shoot and how to run it efficiently because, oh my God, this playbook has the potential to blow the top off the place. But look at that. 33 interceptions, man. 33 interceptions. Averaging 470 yards per game, 226, 263.8 quarterback rating, 17.4 yards per attempt. My longest was 94 yards. But look at that sack 36 times. So they are getting pressure on me. You know what I'm saying? Um, you have to understand this, guys. I know you're seeing these numbers and wondering how. How in the heck did you put up those type of numbers? Did you move it to all America? Did you move it to, to to varsity? Did you move it to 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 freshman? No, 
I, I literally kept it on all American. And so it may just be the time to move it to Heisman. But like I said, I had games that were challenging. North Carolina was challenging. Several games were challenging at the start. And then we just blew the top off of it, man, because we just started airing the ball out. Now, looking at my rushing, because I know you're going to see all that rush, all that passing yards and think, wow, did they ever run the ball? Yes, we did. We ran the ball very efficiently. LJ Martin had 276 carries for 2,000 yards. My backup, LJ Johnson, two LJs, he, he had 998 yards, 16 touchdowns, 10 touchdowns. And then Kyson Brown had 323 yards. Half of that came in one game on two carries. So we definitely ran the ball for a tune of over 3,000 rushing yards all together. And then you look at the receiving stats are through the roof. You can see why this kid won the Heisman. 100 receptions, 3,000 yards, 45 touchdowns, 57 receptions, 200 2,286 rushing yard, uh, receiving yards, I'm sorry, 29 touchdowns. Golden, 64 for 14. Like, Golden was the third leading receiver on the team, and his stats would be good enough for any receiver starting at the Division I level. Like, these numbers are insane. And if you have the personnel, guy, I'm telling you, I can show y'all this playbook so that y'all can see what's going on. How am I able to put up these numbers? I'm really nervous to show it because there's certain play that I, I think, I don't know. It's not glitched because computer does play against it a lot of times. But there's so much big play potential in the veer and shoot. Um, so looking at our uh, coaching stats, let me see. Hopefully it shows our record or whatever. I don't think that it does. No, it doesn't. Uh, but you can see that I worked my way up to an A+. Plus. We're 25-4 and four because remember last season we went, uh, we won four games, two winning seasons, 3-0 and in a playoff record. Playoff win percentage is 100%. One national championship so far. We, we got to our first conference championship. Uh, two first round draft picks is really good for a, a team that's rebuilding. And I know you're going to say, well, DM, if you're rebuilding, then you've won because y'all are now a we were a four star. We was three star at first. We worked our way to a four star offense. And then uh, I'm, I haven't really gotten through this year. But, you know, maybe maybe we will uh, work our way into being a five star program and you might say well at that point is the rebuild done and the guys i'm gonna be honest with you the way that we got ranked number one i scheduled texas a&m texas and oklahoma all back to back at the beginning of the season and the thing about that is this is that we we played all three of those games at home originally they were supposed to all be home games for me anyway so next year what i plan on doing is probably scheduling those same three opponents, maybe different opponents, and playing all three of those games on the road. So, Dynasty Central, um, now we're in the offseason portion of things. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. The, the transfer portal helped me so much, man. The transfer portal was amazing for me last season. A bunch of the guys that went off for me were in the trans were from the transfer portal uh you're looking at top classes we're definitely not up there because we haven't signed that many uh recruits yet we we're we're at the bottom we are at the creme de la creme of the bottom and we had a load of seniors graduating so you can kind of see how that factors in i wish it went straight to uh straight to smu but uh let's see where we are at let's see we're even at the bottom we're 108 in the nation we've only signed five players and they're all four stars so let's go look at our recruiting board we still got some scholarships out here still got some guys that's signing with other teams and stuff like that but the transfer portal is where i have been shining while i'm building my coaching resume you know what i'm saying so i want to go take a look and see what's in the transfer portal i may have to get rid of some of these poindexters three stars but we shall see because the transfer portal is now live and guys it it adds to this as well 
um, the transfer portal mix in with the prospect list. But I always like to go to the actual transport portal list right here and you can see what we need. Our team needs are drastic, man. We we need two quarterbacks. Uh, we need two, three, three halfbacks. We need a fullback. We need, well, we got all the tight ends that we need. Now it says we need a four. We need four tight ends. We need two left tackles. We need three left guards. We need four right guards, two right tackles. And that's just on offense. Guys, when I tell you graduation is hitting us like a ton of bricks, we need two left ends, two right ends, two D tackles, three outside linebackers. We literally need every position possible on the field because we had a big senior class the year before and we went nine and four and then we had a huge senior class this past year so i'm not in a position to turn down any recruits however looking at the overall ratings of these players i'm gonna go through and clean out the ones that are there and i'm going to add the uh the four stars because hey these guys should have signed already i'm not finna dilly daddle and wait for you to sign if i am not in your top recruiting this pause we are going to let you go see right there okay I, I switched it up by national rank let's let's take it back and put it on default that it i did it again interest status recruiting stage there we go default and let's just go here see we're fourth on his list i'm not finna compete we offered you a scholarship them other schools didn't you don't want to sign with us that's fine same thing with that school right there we're top on his so we'll leave that alone uh, I'm not going to compete with these other schools when I got better athletes that are interested. Even tried to sign a kicker and it just didn't work out for me right there. Recruiting hasn't been my strong suit because I tend to forget about recruiting. I don't forget about it per se, but it's kind of like in the back of my mind. It's not just at the forefront, if that makes sense. And so um, I kind of set it and forget it. And you really can't do that with recruiting, even though they have a set it and forget it feature. Once you figured out everything about a recruit, you probably need to change the tune. And I haven't done that. I put friends and family on there and then I'll just, you know, go all willy nilly with, uh, whatever the games and stuff like that. I get so caught up in trying to play games and things. So now I want to do this. I want to go and get the best of the best. So you can see here, these are the recruits that are interested in me, and these are my team needs. I am going to add that linebacker because why not? You know what I'm saying? We're going to add him. He's been signed already, signed on the dotted line, uh, and we're we're going to add these players. I'm actually, yeah, because here's the deal with these linebackers. I can move them to a different position. He is a deep threat wide receiver. I am going to add him because I know come next year, I am going to need some more people. He is a scrambling quarterback, four-star. We are going to add him. We tight end, right guard, defensive tackle, uh, strong safety. Ah, man, these quarterbacks, they're coming out of the woodworks. I like a more receiving uh, halfback, if you will, because those guys can go. I need some defensive ends, though, so let's try to sign some of those guys. I have two spots left, a bunch of three-star jabronis on, on this uh, list right here, and I say that with all respect. I've got all the four stars on there, so that's fine right there. Um let me get some more linebackers because I don't have many. Okay, so that's my recruiting board right there. Now let's go and scout these guys because we've got a plethora of points um, not fully scouted. And we'll go through and scout all of these players. But first, let's offer them scholarships because everybody needs scholarships, right? and we will offer all of them scholarships because we need them all now here's what i wonder is and, and i and you know i know in older games where a player was positioned on your board they knew that so if they were at the bottom of your recruiting board somehow they knew that which i don't get that because in real life they have no clue um but i'm wondering i'm wondering do the players know that they're low on your recruiting board or vice versa? All right. So the game is glitching a little bit on the menu. All right. Let's go back into it and let's see. I need to, I need to scout these guys. I need to know what we're getting from these positions, primarily 
um, my four stars that I just brought in. I didn't recruit these guys, but that's fine. Uh, I want to start from the bottom. Let's let us do it by national rank. So he's a deep threat. And I always like to see what these deep threat receivers are looking like uh, scouting wise because speed matters to me. See, his speed is a 90, his acceleration, uh, Jenkins, we'll just go ahead and scout them, get all of the scouting done so we know what we're working with. And this helps a lot to see. I've seen the 94 speed, 84 pass block. I'm just kind of skimming through this. 73 speed. All right, and that's my last four star. And I'm running out of points. So I need to go and start giving these guys uh, scholarships, man. These are the transfers right here. We've already scouted them. I don't necessarily need a wide receiver. But as you can see, his overview, championship contender. So let us go ahead and schedule. An, let's, let's add an action. I want to hard sell a championship contender which could be several different things. Where is championship contender at? Where is it at? There it goes. I have to pay attention to where it's at. Brand exposure and playing time, uh, championship contender, pro potential and program. I think that would be the best fit. Generally, if a guy's a championship contender, they want to play on a team that can win championships, take them to the professional ranks as well. But, you know, you also have brand exposure and coach prestige, but we'll... We'll try that right there. We'll schedule a visit for him and we will focus on championship contender. I'm going to do this with all of my four stars and I will be right back. Okay, so I've done all of that. It's a tedious task. I didn't want y'all sitting on the video for that. And let's go ahead and go to the next week and see how everything plays out, who we have signed and who we still need to work on. Hopefully we've signed a good deal. Nope, we <laughs> didn't sign anybody, but we did move up on a bunch of people's boards. And that's awesome. That's what we want to see because that means they'll st they are still interested. Now, I'm pretty sure some of them may have signed um, with others. Uh, you see, we moved up over Arkansas against this guy. I'm going to keep that the same because when we look at the recruiting, our pitch um our pitch worked for the most part, except for playing time. We don't, he doesn't want playing time. While playing style is important to him, playing time isn't. So we want to change. We want to change that. Okay, let's go back and let's go to soft sell. He said playing time wasn't important to him, but playing style was. So we know that playing style is important. Okay. And we know that that and proximity to home are two big deals. So this is probably the best pitch for him right there because any other one with playing style, you also have pro potential, which could be important with the quarterback four star. So let's actually switch those two and try that. All right. And let's go to our other recruits. Let's see wide receiver. Okay, see, program tradition was not that important to him. And while it did help us move up over Ohio State championship contender, we are going to go and change this. Okay, remember, program tradition is not important to him. So we want to take that off and we want to hard sell again. What did he say? Program tradition, championship contender. So I want to find all the ones with championship contender. Playing time is not important to him, so we know it's not that one. Uh, you're getting some recruiting tips here. Athletic facilities isn't important to him, so we know it's not that one. So that's the only other one it could be. Um, because he did say uh, pro potential or program tradition wasn't important to him, but pro potential was. Now, there, there it goes. I forgot there's always one option that's going to give you all three of the green check marks so long as you know your recruit. This is the one we should have used before. We're going to hard sell this, and that is probably, no, we don't want to soft sell. I want to hard sell. All right, let's hard sell that. Definitely don't want to soft sell that one because that, that could cost us a recruit. Sunday bound, and a lot of times your four-star receivers are the one or four star players period those are the ones that are going to be interested in those types of deals 
Um, I know I have these other four stars here. We're first on his list. We need to schedule a visit with him. He's a bust, but he's still a four star. Playing style is a A+. Plus. I'm not going to change anything with him. I am just going to schedule a visit with him off of playing style because we, nobody else has offered him a scholarship right now. So where are we at? Playing style. Okay, we'll have him attend a practice. And actually, um, he's already been recruited pretty heavily. And where is his speed? Is not listed. Strength 83, pass block 63. Impact blocking 72. His blocking isn't that great. You can see why he is a bust, but he also has the ability second level. So we're still gonna we're still gonna give him some some uh recruiting love. Playing style right there. We'll add an action. We'll do a soft sell because I don't really know um what they say, playing style. My my brain is not brain and I forgot that fast. I should have all three of those check marks listed. And I may go ahead and hard sell him. Let's go ahead and do that. Matter of fact, let's let's do a hard sell, man. We got the points to spend. And I know that we can sign this guy. Playing time is a D plus, but that's not his deal breaker. Um looking at his recruiting we popped up first on his list over texas and guys that's part of the reason why i played a bunch of texas schools in the preseason is so hopefully in recruiting it can say hey we beat this team you know we beat the stuffing out of them and it's cool because georgia lost to texas that was their only loss last year aside from us in the national championship and then they ended up beating texas in the sec championship in the sec championship game so you can see here um playing time is not important to him so we want to take playing time off playing style is big so we want to add an action we want a hard sell uh what did he want playing style there's the three check marks all together and we should be able to get a alignment that gives us all three we are gonna sign this guy i'm sure of it Hopefully we get to sign them. Okay, same thing here. Recruiting pro potential is not important to him. Let's remove that because we know what he's looking for is playing style. Um, let's do another hard sell on playing style. And it's got to be the one that doesn't have. Uh, it's not that one. It's more than likely going to be conference prestige because I don't think there's another one with playing. Oh, playing time. Actually, let's try that because he may be looking for playing time. Um, yeah, because proximity to home just wasn't it for that guy right there. All right. Um, okay, when we already signed another left tackle right there because we got to have some depth, guys. We got to have some depth. I didn't even look at... This guy, we're fourth on his list. Um, position rank. They're both position rank, too. That makes no sense. Oh, that, that's good. The second left guard in the nation on both positions. So we definitely want to make sure we can sign him. Uh, program tradition is not important to him. So we definitely need to take that off and we can hard sell something else. Uh, program tradition. Do we have three check marks? No, we do not. What was his championship contender was his. So championship contender and pro potential need to be in the same one. I'm going to learn these. I'm going to memorize these after a while. It's going to have to be that one right there. That's the only one that's left. And that's a soft sell. I didn't want a soft sell. I want a hard sell. I don't know why the game glitches sometimes when you try to do certain stuff like that. So we're going to go with those two actions right there. And then we definitely need to get this guy on the board. We're fourth on the list by Michigan. Playing style is important to him. We're going to schedule a visit. Playing style is important. So we're going to do this. And this should move us up the list um, pretty heavily right there. So hard sell right there. What did we say? Playing style. We have no clue what he's looking for and playing style but hopefully proximity to home now proximity to home is probably not going to be important to him because he is in chicago so i don't want to do proximity to home um but playing style is important so 
uh where are we at playing style playing style playing style which ones have playing styles how oh, proximity to home again guys conference prestige look at that anytime you do playing style proximity to home is always highlighted and that is crazy because this guy is nowhere close to uh to to texas he's he stays in 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 chicago he stays in illinois uh look at playing style pro potential i mean good gracious playing style and conference prestige we're just gonna have to take a shot in the dark here guys pro potential hopefully it sells him with the number two ranked guard in the recruiting class, I'm pretty sure he's wanting to uh he's wanting to come play. See, nobody's competing for this guy, so I'm not I'm just gonna schedule a visit for him and let's do coach prestige. Where is my coaching prestige? There it goes right there. That's an A plus. We'll save those points. All right, the defensive ends. I'm just going to pause again and go through this because I don't want y'all sitting on here forever. All right, so we finally got that tedious task out the way, and it's time to go ahead and move forward. Hopefully, we start signing these guys. A lot changed a bunch of them that we were already first on. There we go, Caden Jenkins. He is the number one rated quarter cornerback in the transfer portal, guys. The transfer portal has been doing me wonders. We got another cornerback. He was, I think, number four, or he could have been the number one. But it's good job. There we go. We're starting to sign these guys. And now you can see we're number one on a bunch of these guys' list. These two signed with Ohio State. That's perfectly fine. If we look at the ones that we did sign, if you look at their position rank, we signed the right guard, the number two right guard in the nation, in the transfer portal, of course. Um, and then we signed the number three and number one cornerback in that and and one's a man to man guy one's a corner or, or a zone coverage guy so that same thing guys i'm gonna pause i'm gonna go through and set up my recruiting and then we'll be right back to see the results all right so we got that week done as well and i want to show y'all a little bit something i know i got a lot of points left uh and i am gonna use those but i wanted to show y'all the two cornerbacks that we signed uh from the transfer portal and uh also just period this is the one that we signed during the season and he is a zone tendency and i want to show you their attributes which is uh impressive so 91 speed 92 acceleration this is what's crazy generally your man-to-man -man corners are faster so he's the number one guy in the transfer portal his speed is a 90 his acceleration is a 93 uh, he's definitely going to be a higher overall, but, you know, I was just interested at that because this is a zone corner. And look at that speed and acceleration. And he's 6'1". Both of these guys are 6'1". So I thought that was very cool to see. So I want to advance a week because I'm at the top of everybody else's list. And let's see who we all signed. There we go. We got a center. We got a free safety, Roy City, Texas. We got the left tackle that we needed, four-star. We got the four-star middle linebacker as well. That is awesome sauce, spaghetti sauce. So I'm going to recruit again this final week, and we'll be right back. All right, we are done with the final week of recruiting, and we signed some more players. We actually, Newton, Texas, okay. My new AD is from Newton, Texas. We got the four-star tight end. We got the three-star free safety. We had a decent class. Now, he's going to drop off, and that's fine. Look at the coach. We're leveling up, guys. We are leveling up. Slowly but surely, hopefully we can win another national championship. If we go to National Signing Day, we can see all of our signees. Um, we scholarshiped. Looks like, uh, let me see, let's take him off and let's take him off. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 of 35. Now, the rest of the players that were on our board or whatever like that, they would get added as a walk-on. These players, some of the players are going to get added as walk-ons and stuff. But 19 of 35, that doesn't put us in the top class by any measure um actually let's go see where we fall we actually are ranked 17th in the nation in the signing class 
So that's not bad. 11 four stars and eight three stars is quite impressive. We didn't land any uh, five stars, but you look at the top schools and you look at what they're, they're adding, 25 four stars. I mean, they are stacking up and they are racking up players left and right. And you could kind of see that right there. We only signed 19 guys. So for 19 guys you may say well you only signed 19 why are you rated so high it's because of the quality of the players that we got even in the transfer portal look our top commits are from the transfer portal guys recruiting is tough in this game and i'm excited about it and i like it i'm not complaining about it but i need to do a better job just recruiting in general so position changes are always interesting because you do have some players uh, that you need at certain positions. Jennings is going to be the starter for me at quarterback. He, he got a significant amount of reps when we were up by a bunch of games and stuff like that. And he's proving that he can run the ball. Now, what's interesting is I run the beer and shoot offense last season, but with him in the helm, I am going to stick with that. It is like, actually, it's weird, you know, because Preston Stone is more of a pocket guy. He can run a little bit, but he's not as fast a runner as Jennings is from South Oak Cliff. I'll let your boy state champs. But um, Jennings is going to be the type of guy that I am going to use. Like he, he gives more mobility to the position. And guys, this isn't really a game where you can scramble a lot with the quarterback, to be honest with you. But he is a scrambler. He is not rated as highly overall. Now, this is position changes. He could get a, a lot bigger bump once he's once the training is done. But he's got mobile resistance. He's got option king and extender. So he is going to be a freaking playmaker for us. And you look at the playing time. <laughs> yeah, we also got a backup in uh, Keldrick Luster from McKinney. Uh, not as fast, uh, but he's a decent quarterback. He'll be a junior and then our sophomore. So we're definitely going to need to recruit a quarterback for the future this year of the program. And then our halfbacks, of course, Martin's going to be a senior this year. I'm telling you, after his training, this guy should be a 90-something overall player. He's a senior. We got two seniors. Um, our other one graduated. Uh, Quandre Polk, he's going to be a senior this year. Decent speed. Um, these two are very similar, 6'2", 225, 5'10", 207. And then, of course, the junior, the speedster right here in the group with 94 speed, 93 acceleration. We are going to have fun. We, we've put him in games and stuff like that. It's going to be fun to play with him. We need to work this guy into the lineup somehow because he's got uh, he's got abilities that could be useful. Now, in the receiving core, we return our star wide receiver, Ashton Cozart. Um, 93 speed, 92 acceleration, and now um, we add um, uh, Shetron, if that's how you pronounce that. I don't know with these names. And then Lavender is the speedster. I'm expecting him to have a big boost because he had a big season last year. Um, as a number three receiver, he's going to be a go-to on these deep routes. Kosar got open a lot as well. And then, you know, other than that, I mean, my top three guys are very fast. They can run, but I don't like this. Like this right here, 88, 89, they're good for RPOs. They're, you know, to say that he's a deep threat is crazy. I wouldn't consider that a deep threat. Me personally, for what I do offensively, I think he's more physical. This guy could help us. Uh, Road dog mentality, best friend. He's got recoup, but the speed right here on this cat, man, that could definitely help us right there so i'm hoping he has a big off season to where i could possibly work him into the number four slot but with a 69 overall and a 75 i don't think he makes that jump but we will have to see and then you can see in the receiving room i only have one senior everybody else will be back this guy i think he may leave for the draft because he had a tremendous season last year he was actually second in the heisman race and had over a thousand uh, to two thousand receiving yards. So I'm gonna leave them where they are at. I'm not gonna change that. Now my tight ends, a senior and a junior, that's fine. The other three guys are freshmen, so I'm not gonna look to change them right now. Let's look at where we're at in our other overalls. Uh, left tackle, 88. Senior, 83. That's fine. We'll leave that put. 81 overall on left guard. So I need to find me another left guard. And the way to do that, the way that I've done that that's worked for me, 
I like these two for my starter and my backup. So I will go because they're going to get training and they're going to improve. I'm going to look at this guy. So my left guard is a 81 overall. I need a significant backup. So I'm going to go to him and see where he's at on left guard. He is a 78 overall that is decent for what i need but let's go check out my tight ends because some of my freshmen may be better at left guard and they are not you can see their overall right here and you can't even change the incoming freshman's position i forgot about that i can't change them to a different position uh why i don't know maybe because they hadn't hit campus yet but this left tackle, I'm probably going to go ahead and move him. Let's just see if he's a better overall at left guard. He's not. He's a 75 overall. So we're going to take this freshman and we're going to move him to left guard uh, to be a, a significant backup. I think that that's going to work good. I Give us some depth there at the left guard position right there because he's going to get training as well and going to improve. And then my centers. Centers are set, man. The centers are set. What I could have done is looked at this guy to be a left guard and he's actually 82 overall that would be phenomenal i don't really want him to have to be third string but dude he's a senior and so coming back i'm gonna have some depth at the center position which is something that we haven't had in a long time he's 80 overall at left guard and he hasn't even received training yet he's 80 overall uh at right guard so let's go and check out the right guard position 82 overall so i definitely need some depth at the right guard position so let's move him to our right guard and that would give us a little bit more depth right there um i don't want to move too many people around because i can't also switch people in the depth chart it's crazy that a freshman is higher higher rated than a uh senior right there and this this isn't the depth chart this is just position changes now left tackle yes that backup is a 78 as a junior that cannot be good so let's see if my tackle position is 79 overall we will move him to right tackle that'll give us a little bit more depth and it'll clean up the center room as well so now you see our right tackle is there and we got a little bit more depth. These guys are going to improve. You can see if they're 88 overall right now, they're going to be in the 90s. Like watch, you're going to see after training is done how ridiculous this is. I'm satisfied with that. Arbor came back for his senior year. This guy was a beast from Duncanville. Holla at your boy. This guy right here is going to be significant for us going into next season his speed is great 82 and 91 acceleration i am happy with that kid right in on the other hand is where we're suffering hopefully cooper is going to be an 80 overall after training uh his speed could be better man i'm kind of hoping the freshman comes in and 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 competes for that spot because his speed and acceleration is what i look for in a end the rest of these guys i mean they are more defensive tackles honestly but this guy right here, man, that is ideal and I like it. I'm going to leave the senior there. I'm going to leave him there. But if I go to my left ends, no, nope. maybe I have some defensive tackles that could play that position. And no, I don't. Their speed is not that well. Also, their depth. I mean, these guys are going to be 80 overall. That's going to be fine. But my goodness, right end is not looking good. And, and even with the defensive tackles, I mean, 79 overall, maybe we got a right end. Maybe this right end could be a higher rated defensive tackle. And he could. He's 72 overall, but he'd be number four on the depth chart. So we'll leave that be because, guys, once again, remember, you can um, you can just arrange them in the depth chart however you want them. The, and so you may say, well, why even switch them positions? Because they get training at that position and there's certain abilities that are only available to certain positions as well. So. As far as my right end, he's going to end up being an 80 overall. You know, his speed is okay, but this incoming freshman right here, he's going to make an impact. And I don't know, guys, he may just end up being my starter. I like his speed for what I do defensively. I need a defensive end that can get back there. Now, that acceleration is good. That's what's going to give you that jump off the ball. But he's even stronger than this guy. His awareness is almost the same. I mean, dude, his tackling is almost the same. Now, his hit power is significantly lower, as you would expect from a redshirt senior from a freshman, but in his pursuit is a little bit, a lot better. So we're gonna, it's going to be interesting to see where we go with this right end spot because my left end may end up just being the starter. And actually, while I sit here and think about it, 
we might go ahead and move him. He'd be 78 overall. Now, we'll leave him where he's at uh, because then he'll be better than the senior and we'll lose that depth. Defensive tackles, those will generally stay. We got a bunch of juniors who will be seniors this year and incoming freshmen. Actually, no, they're juniors this year. I take that back. They'll be juniors this year. Um, so a lot of depth, a lot of young guys in there. Now, left outside linebacker is not looking good. So we definitely need to change that. And right outside linebacker is not. But the middle linebacker room is stacked. And look at this speed. I think these two guys would make good outside linebackers. So we'll see what they look like for left outside and right outside. They look the same. So we'll move him to left outside linebacker. And then we'll move the other speedster to the right outside linebacker just because of their speed. And it gives us some depth. Um, uh, right outside linebacker. I think I did that right. I hope I did that right. We should have one. Yeah, we should have two guys right there who's going to receive training they're going to get better that gives us depth middle linebacker is decent um but then see we got two seniors and i really don't want two seniors having to compete and then you got the freshman red shirt and the sophomore there uh which one is better so both of them are 70 something overalls let's look and see he'd be at 81 overall that would get both of them on the field at the same time but this also gives me depth as far as my backup is concerned. So what I might do, um, because also look at that speed. That speed is actually not bad at all. 81 and 94 right outside. Let us, i tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to move this middle linebacker here. Okay, what was he at? 77 overall and 76. You know what? Let's just leave it right there. We'll see the training in the depth chart and we'll we'll go from there. Uh cornerback room is stacked and we got some dogs in the secondary finally. So us running the 425 is going to be very significant because um the 425 consists of two cornerbacks and three safeties. Now what I may do, what I may be able to do because of my defensive end, um because of my defensive ends and my D tackles you know what? I think I'm going to just stay put. I was thinking about switching to the 3-3-5. Three, three, that would give me three corners. But we, oh, man, that's going to be crazy. Our cornerback room is stacked. But you can look at all the seniors. We have one, two, three, four, five seniors in the cornerback room. All of these guys are going to be, like, in the high 80s to 90 overall. They are some ballers. Look at that. And look at the speed. 97 speed. 94 acceleration. He's a slower guy. He's more like a slot corner man. The man that says right here, 95, 96 speed, 93 speed, 98 acceleration in the zone. So this is a guy. Let's look and see. Because look, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I thought was going to happen. Look at these freshmen. We got to get them in the transfer portal. But dude, we are going to move some of these corners to free safety and strong safety. And I bet you it's going to work out. So Let's go and look. See, I have one, two. I really need three solid corners uh, here. Now, I think that this guy with the lower speed, actually, they all have great speed. We're going to take the lower of the three, and we're going to see where they are at to be a free safety and a strong safety. He'd be 83 overall at free safety. I think that's a solid move. Um, let's see if he would be better. He may be better. Nope, he would be 80, 80 and 80 for that, 83 and 80 for that. So that's what we're going to do right here. Plus, they're seniors, and the other guys are freshmen. Look, very young room right there and a fairly young room right there. So we're going to do that. We're going to take the first one, the third one, because that's one, two, three. We're going to take him as a senior, and we are going to move him to free safety. He's going to be an 83 over. Actually, you know what? Maybe he might be better at strong safety. What is his tackling? What are these two's tackling? Because my, my strong safety needs to be able to tackle. Let's just be honest. His speed is great, though. I need him at free safety. Let's, yeah, that, that speed is amazing. So let's move him to free safety. And let's move the other one to strong safety. And that's going to give me so much depth. And on top of that, they're going to receive training. So they're going to be even better. 
uh, than the starters. See, that is a drastic improvement right there at free safety, and that's a decent improvement at, at strong safety. That speed, it's killer, man. Look at the change of direction as well. I think that was a solid move right there. We don't have a kicker, guys. We do not have a kicker. I don't know why I did not sign a kicker, and then my punter is trash, but we really don't kick and punt that much you know in this offense so that's something that we will have to see but i'm satisfied with that so let's go out and let's see the results of our training in the following week this is where it gets fun when you see how much your players improve in the off season man this is where it's fun all right training results yes sir we are going to looky see here so looking at our roster Quarterback Jennings didn't improve. He really didn't. And, and you don't see a big improvement for the juniors and seniors. The upperclassmen don't really improve that much. But that's fine. I can deal with the 87 overall. Uh, halfbacks, Martin is a 90 overall. We expected that. I wish his speed had went up one, but that's fine. 87, 81, and Brown is getting lost in the sauce, y'all. He's going to have to step it up. I mean, next year, these are going to be my go-to backs. And they'll be in the 80s, which will be fine unless I sign a big-time recruit. But... I'm not I'm not upset about that. And in the receiving room, look at that, man. We're looking good. Cozart with an 89 overall, 85, 83. This is going to make us uh, significantly better. And I'm liking the speed. He's my third receiver. That's fine. He needs to be there. I was hoping that this kid here would make some improvements. But, you know, maybe we can find a way to, to work him into the lineup with what we do offensively. Uh, you have your one, two, three, four, maybe I'll switch these two out right here because dude, I got to get that speed on the field. He may be a return guy or something like that. Maybe I should have looked at switching him. I don't know what his, uh, tackling and stuff is. I may could have switched him to the secondary kick return is a 93. He's more likely going to be my return guy. I don't want lavender doing it just because lavender, uh, I need him rested up. I don't need him taking big hits because he's going to be significant for us. That toughness is A tier. I like it. Uh, it doesn't show me like his defensive stats, but that's fine. That's fine. We're not worried about that. Plus, look at his ball carrier vision. It's a 94, man. Like, dude, breaking tackle in that high, trucking in that high, stiff arm is and spin move is. I mean, he he's a wide receiver. His release is not very high. His deep route running isn't, but his medium route running is on par. Look at that. His medium route running and his um, short route running are on par to be the third string guy. So, guys, I might need to put him in there just because of those two stats alone. His deep route running isn't as good, but that's fine. Spectacular catch. His catching traffic is on par. His catching period is on par. That awareness is not as good as my number four guy, Greg Bladen. That is, that is, that is, oh my gosh. Decisions are here to be made, but we will make those later. Tight end is looking good. 83, 81, my left tackle. Oh, 88 overall, but I need some depth there at left tackle. My left guard's improvement is good. I'm happy there. Centers are looking really good. Oh, my gosh. The depth chart's going to be nice offensively with 80 overall at every position. Right tackle's looking good. That starter is looking nice with the 90 overall. He's going to be the anchor guy for us. Left end is looking really good, 87, 83, 84. I wish that 74 was better, but he's a freshman rusher. I'm not going to knock him on that. Plus, he has some abilities that's going to help us. Defensive tackle, <laughs> we're looking great up front. I'm happy with that. My starting linebacker, the 79 isn't bad for a backup. Middle linebacker, that's looking good. Um, 79 overall there. Remember, we changed that. That stuff is going to be a little bit different. And then my cornerback room is looking nice as well as my free safety. Remember, we moved a guy to free safety. And uh, that, I don't think that's the guy that we moved positions, was it? No, because he was a senior. No, they're not showing the guys that we moved to different positions for some reason. Yes, they are, because there goes Chambers right there at an 81 overall. And then he's there. So my free safety looks like he actually got worse, which is weird. I don't know. Maybe that wasn't the guy because, no, it wasn't. My free safety, he was a corner. So, remember, I moved three of my corners who were seniors 
And so look at that. Oh, man, he actually ended up being the third string guy. That is weird. I don't know, man. I'll have to look at my depth chart because I'm pretty sure unless they ended up moving him to a different position. And I hope that they really didn't do that. That's going to be very upsetting, very off putting, if you will. So let's go look at the depth chart and we're going to just auto reorder. Should we just auto reorder or leave it as is? Brown is actually the third string guy. That is interesting that they would do that, guys, because look at the overall. His overall isn't better, but I used him. And so maybe they look like, hey, he's used him. I don't know if this, but oh my gosh, look at that, man. We're, we're going to have to find a way to work all of these guys into the lineup. 90 speed and 95 acceleration is nothing to scoff at, plus the abilities, man. Like I said, they're going to get a lot of playing time next year anyway, so I'm not tripping about that. But Man, this this is interesting. I'll leave it as is uh, for right now, man. 75 and 77. I mean, you see the natural overalls. That's that's even oh, man. they get a boost because of my coaching It's so awesome. Oh, man. Look at the wide receivers. Ah, dude, this is crazy. So this is the guy that I wanted to work in, but I don't think that's going to happen. We're going to move him above him, though. Uh, Cause that speed needs to get onto the field. I really would hate to do that to this kid here, but man, I've got to get that speed. That's what I do offensively, man, and it works so well for me. Tight end room looks fine. Left tackle depth chart looks fine because I only have one left tackle, and he is the backup. Patterson is the uh, he's. I don't think he's the starter. He's not even the starter. See, so that's fine right there. Uh, left guard, we're looking good right there. Center, we're looking great at center. Uh, right guard, we're looking good at right guard. 80. Oh man, we need to we need to add some depth to it, man. I don't know what they're doing with that. The second depth chart was was not depth charting. And then you look down here and you see stuff like this. So your right tackle, Fano. Okay, is he the starter? See, he is the starter. And I always see stuff like this, and I'm like, man, maybe we should move him. Williams is the starter at left tackle, and that's my starter at center. And then you see like an 86 overall down here, and you're like, wow, my backup center would actually be a better starter. But I'm going to leave them because he's a freshman, and I think that that's going to work really good for us. He's also a freshman as well. See what I'm saying? So there's no need to switch those guys out. You have a... A very good lineup. My right tackle, my left tackle, and my center are all solid guys. Chambers is a 89 overall. And that is interesting because look at that. Chamberlain. I'm sorry. I said Chambers. Chamberlain. Okay. I was finna say we need to get that guy in the lineup, doesn't we? So uh left ends. 87, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. That's not bad. My right ends, 81 overall. Really would have liked to have had a better backup. Uh, and maybe we can. Uh, 74, no, I think he's my starting defensive tackle. Walton is. So we don't want to change that. The defensive tackles are fine. We're just going to be weak for a backup at, because um, Barr is the second string D tackle. Allen is third string uh so i i'm gonna leave that as is plus he's a freshman so those reps will help him in the future defensive tackle we're looking straight right there left outside linebacker eh. arbor is a starter i can't put him there middle kilgore is a starter middle linebacker i can't put him there my backup left end would actually make a better starting linebacker but because my ends do get subbed out pretty frequently, I don't want to make that move to put him as a starter. But it could be significantly uh, better for us, which is really weird because this is left outside linebacker, right? You see this guy here. Why do they not have him on there? You know what I'm saying? Like, he's clearly the starter. Let's put that guy in there. Maybe it's the guy that I moved. They're looking at the depth chart from last year, and immediately that is so much better. Yeah, that's the guy. Look at that speed. 84 speed, 94 acceleration. That is ridiculous. Middle linebacker seems to be looking straight. Booker would be an 82 overall, but he's my starting outside linebacker. No, he is the backup. So, 82 overall, we're going to also make him the backup 
at a uh, middle linebacker in case I run a two middle linebacker system then I'll have good speed on the field look at that acceleration it's ridiculous left outside linebacker ugh, not looking very good at all with a 77 overall flowers is at 83 and I may go ahead and start him there but this guy is a freshman we'll see how it goes I may just leave him in there he's got a lot of mental abilities so I need to see his developmental trait and see like how good is he just going to be. 6'3", 237. Kind of feel like leaving him in there. Pendleton, he's already starting at backer. Flowers, I want to say, is starting at left end or he may be the backup. Yeah, he's the backup left end. I'm going to leave him there. Ah, man, I'm tempted to start him so bad. But we're going to leave it as is. He's the starting left tackle. He's the starting middle linebacker. So we don't... We don't um, Kilgore, yes, Kilgore is the starting middle linebacker, so we don't want to put him there. Booker is already starting, and then that is my starting right in Cooper. Let's see, is Cooper starting at right in? Yes. So we'll leave that as is. We'll just be weak at the right outside linebacker position. And I definitely need to get some depth there. Actually, no, we're not. Look at this right here. Smith is right here sitting in the wing at a 79 overall 85 speed 94 acceleration and the game didn't even bother to put him into the depth chart i know i could auto reorder but it's going to mess up everything that i've done thus far so we're not going to do that right outside linebacker who do i have smith okay so that works cornerback room y'all know the cornerback room gonna be stacked look at that right there we got our starters we got our backups we are looking good free safety is really weird because we literally moved one of our free safeties, one of our corners to free safety. And it doesn't appear that they even put him there. I don't know if that's a glitch or what, but what we're going to do, we're going to take our backup strong safety, who is Jones. Jones should be the backup. Yes. And we're going to put, mm, you know what? I like, I like chamber speed a little bit better. So what I am going to do, I am going to switch these two out. And I'm going to put Chambers to be my starter at, uh, at free safety. Where is Chambers? We're going to make him the starter at free safety because he's just better. You know, nothing wrong with that. And he's got speed. And speed kills my guy. I don't know where the other guy went. Maybe they did end up moving Chambers to... Um, to free safety instead like i don't know why why the game did that that's really weird because y'all remember y'all saw i had two corners and i moved one to uh free safety and i moved the other one to strong safety and then you're looking here he's a starter at corner he's a starter at corner and he's the third string corner and then you got oh oh i need to work him in where's prox set on the cornerback depth chart he is, nah, yeah, he's my he's my nickel. He's not the nickel. He's the four string. Guys, let's make that change. That gives us some speed. Oh, my gosh. Let's do that. Let's, let's do that, bro. Let's work Prox in here. Let's put Prox there because look at that speed. That is going to help us tremendously at free safety, man. That speed alone, change of direction is great. Awareness is better. Uh, play recognition is the same. His man coverage isn't as good, but my safeties play a lot of zones. Zone coverage is the same. His press isn't as good. His catch isn't as good. His tackling isn't as good. Okay, maybe I'll leave him as the backup. <laughs> maybe I'll leave him as the backup. His pursuit, but this speed, man, his pursuit is better. His jumping is better. His carry isn't as good. Juke move isn't as good um spin move is better stiff arm trick i'm not concerned with that his toughness isn't as good yeah i think it's good to leave him as the backup because man oh man that speed right there but that's not a significant difference the, the top speed is but the acceleration isn't but i think he makes a a decent backup at free safety and actually let me switch this around because he should be over him and, and we got a lot of young guys at, at the free safety position. So that's going to be interesting. 
Very, very interesting. What were, procs would be an 80 overall at free say? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. See, I could have left Chambers there. Let's do that, dude. Let's let's do that. Now, Chambers is an 81 overall at strong safety. So, we'll leave that. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. You know what? Forget it. Let's start Prox. Let's start him at strong safety, at free safety, and then we will leave Chambers in. That gives us more speed at the strong safety spot right there. Kicker is trash. My punter is trash. Kick return. We didn't want Lavender back there. We need Carroll back there because of the speed and because Lavender is going to be carrying a large load pause for us. Kickoff specialist. Uh, long snapper, that's going to stay the same. Third down running back is going to be Martin because why not? Martin is 6'2", 225. I actually, I'm, I'm probably going to change this. A third down running back, get a guy in there with some speed. But, I mean, heck, everybody's about the same. He's a receiving back. He's an elusive back. Let's put uh, Chamberlain in there as our third down running back. Our power halfback is going to stay at Martin. Slot wide receiver, Lavender. Our rush, that's going to stay the same. Our rush D-tackle, I mean, it is what it is. He actually has better speed and acceleration, so let's put the freshman in there because you need that. Uh, sub linebackers, that's going to stay the same. Our slot corner, uh, Davis should be the slot corner. Look at that speed. That is clutch right there. Where is Davis at on the depth chart, though? Davis is actually second string, so... If I run a nickel or something, they'll just switch these two, which will be perfectly fine. So my depth chart is set, man. And now it is time to go and upgrade. Let's upgrade my coach. Uh, I've been specking a lot into um, Scheme Guru. The reason why is because if when I win one more top 10 game, this tier is going to unlock and I will be able to access fast tempo. I am so excited to access fast tempo. And you can see the second tier of items are worth eight points a piece. Oh, my gosh. But fast tempo gives us battery pack, which offensive players fatigue slower and hurry up. Caught napping, increased delay to defenders looking to the sideline at the snap. On their heels, team composure boost for first downs gained running hurry up. And then tipped your hand, chance to see the defender's coverage shell. That is interesting. And then also fast tempo defense. I want to get that as well because we play teams that run the hurry up. You have the pass game offense, increased catch ability for touchdown passes 10 yards or less. Um, increased catch ability for 20 yards. And then increased catch ability for passes anywhere on the field. And then see you, we see you. Chance for post snap blitz detection. So all of these are blitz detection type deals right here. Ground and pound offense, deep defensive line takes a fatigue hit for every four plus yard run. I'm gonna tell y'all what. If y'all seen me run the veer and shoot, you will completely understand why I need scheme guru unlocked because I run a lot of up tempo and we average the running backs like eight yards a carry. So imagine your defensive line getting fatigued because we are going to up tempo the crap out of you. I am so excited for this. D line and linebackers take a fatigue hit and then on the other one reduces defender ability to disengage from run blocks. Bro, reduces defender ability to shed run blocks. Bro, we all finna go stupid in this no huddle, man. I hope I have enough left. What's the max coach level for the game? I, I think it's 50, isn't it? I can't remember if it was 50 or if it was 27. I'm praying to God that it's 50 because, oh, dolly dolly. If it is 27, I am not going to be able to access a lot of these things. And I am going to be bummed because you can't refund points and you can't um you can't refund points so we'll see right there but i'm excited about that i'm saving those points for that because now it is time and then you see i did sign a my offensive coordinator left he actually left he got a better job which is perfectly fine his prestige was an a plus i brought on uh this this guy tony rhodes he's a scheme guru um, he ran the air raid at Texas Tech, and he's a prestigious coach. And then, of course, we had to sign a new defensive coordinator because the other one was trash. And you know what's crazy? He actually got coordinator of the year, which is crazy because we allowed an uh, astronomical amount of uh, points. Yeah, that wasn't fun. 
So sign a new defensive coordinator as well. Now we are going to advance and set up our schedule. This is going to be nice. Do I want to do what I did last time and just set up a tough schedule? Right now, we are still ranked number one. It looks like, okay, encourage transfers. It depends. If we're over, I'm going to encourage. If not, I'm not going to worry about it. And we're not. Our roster size is 72 out of 85. I'm not going to encourage nobody to transfer. You can encourage incoming freshmen to anyway. And so what I'll probably go through is just redshirt all of these guys because, oh my gosh, they're not going to play and they look trash anyway. But what I like to tend to do is kind of look at the seniors um, and and do it that way. I like how the game separates it into overall, kind of let you know, like, hey, if you got a junior or a senior right here, you probably need to encourage him to transfer. Like Carol right here, you know, 99 speed, 97 acceleration. I'm not going to encourage him to transfer. I'm going to use him this year. So the roster size is fine, so I'm not going to encourage anybody to transfer. Um Custom conferences, I'm not changing conferences. The ACC has been interesting. You see us entering the season number one in the nation, and, and <laughs> rightfully so. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we got some ranked teams in the conference. You, you've got North Carolina's ranked, Pittsburgh's ranked, Georgia Tech, Clemson, and Boston College are all ranked in the ACC. I thought about adding... Um, Actually, do we want to add a school? Because how many do we have? We have an even, nope, we have an odd number of schools. Let's let's see, who could we add that deserves to be in the ACC? Um, Let me see, the Big Ten, mm, nah. They fine in the Big Ten. The Big 12 is, is they look good. American Conference, uh, none of them. Maybe Memphis would be a decent add to the ACC. Cause they're already on that side anyway conference usa will leave them be liberty 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 wouldn't be a bad addition to the acc man they need to come up to a bigger conference because conference usa they are dominating that they're a three-star program the independence you have notre dame you have uconn and umass now i will say uconn would be a nice addition to the acc since they're on that side anyway um, and it would give us more depth. The only thing is UConn is not looking very well right now as a team. The Mid-American Conference, nobody from that. I would probably think of uh, uh, Western Michigan, but they're good. Mountain West, I mean, they're Mountain West for a reason. Even though we got Stanford and Cal in there, I really don't want to bring them over. Um, the Pac-12, I mean... The Pac-12 is non-existent. We could literally add Oregon and Washington State. This would also help to lessen the blow for um, this would also add to lessen the blow for Cal and Stanford. They would have some games on their side. So it is not possible to remove more teams from Cal. So we can't. We can't. That is so unfortunate. I would have added them in a heartbeat. Now, I do want to look at the ACC really fast because looking at the prestige i mean cal is a two and a half star but they're 84 overall duke is a three star because i was thinking about adding liberty they're a three and a half star they're 79 overall so you know what wake forest i mean dude let's go and add liberty to the acc why not Liberty joins the ACC, and that's going to boost our conference rank as well because they're ranked 14th in the nation. Awesome sauce, spaghetti sauce. So um, we'll leave that as is. I would do like conference rules and break it down into like east and west kind of deal, but we're not going to do that. How many teams do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 12, 16, 17, 18. Actually, let's do that. Let's do divisions. Yes, you have, uh, we'll do ACC, we'll do East and West. And I, this is not going to be, um, this is not going to be very particular, but, it, you know, I mean, most of the teams are on the West, but it's fine. Number of conference games, we'll have eight, uh, conference championship game is on Bank of America Stadium, 
And then championship game selection criteria, top teams by conference record. You can have top division leaders by conference record. That's what we want to do because we're going to be splitting the divisions. If we did it like this, then you could have two teams out of the East play each other or two teams out of the West. So you want to change it top division leaders by conference record. No top teams by conference record. You want division leaders. And then, I mean, you can have as many conference games as you want, but we're going to leave it at eight. That's going to be fine. That's going to allow us to play some teams from the West as well. Um, hopefully all of them are just East and West divisions. So we'll leave it at that. I think I like that a lot. So let's back up. And now that they're in divisions, this is the East division. And uh, this is the East. And no, oh, wait, where are we at? Where are we at? That's ACC East why is why is it doing this why is why is it why is it why is it doing this it just says acc east i don't know which one is east i don't know which one is west oh that's because i didn't name it so <laughs> my bad y'all we'll name this east and we'll name this the west and we will leave that as is bank of america stadium will still be the championship location and this is interesting how they kind of already put them there uh boston college will stay in the east clemson they'll stay in the east florida state is east duke is in rally they're in north carolina uh georgia tech let's see pittsburgh there's okay let's look at it like this okay stanford is definitely in the west. a bunch of these teams are in the east anyway guys i'm just you know and it's cool how they already split them up into even teams um Liberty, let's, I mean, Cal needs to be there. Definitely. Uh, man, 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 this is, this is confusing. All right. So I got it all worked out, man. It, it, the best that I could. So you're looking at the East, you have Boston College, Clemson, Miami, Duke, North Carolina State, Pittsburgh, Virginia Tech, Syracuse, and Wake Forest. And then is the West Conferences. I have a West, West division. I have California, Florida State, Liberty, Georgia Tech, Louisville, North Carolina, Stanford, SMU, and Virginia. Only because Virginia Tech's a little bit more East. Actually, no. Let's switch these two. Virginia Tech is a little bit more uh, West than Virginia. And then uh, North Carolina and North NC State. North Carolina is a little bit more uh, West than North Carolina State. Stanford's definitely West. Florida State's a little bit more West than Clemson. Uh, Clemson's just further up North or whatever. So we'll leave it like that. It's pretty balanced. You got, what, three ranked teams in that division. You got one, two, three, four ranked teams. And now when it's a little bit balanced, you got Clemson as a decent team, NC State, Pitt. Um, one conference is gonna be a little bit better than another, but that's fine. And I like that. So we'll, we'll leave that as is. And now we will have divisions. I always liked divisions in college football because then you kind of play. It's kind of like the, the, the best of the East and the best of the West or the best of the North, the best of the South. And with eight conference games, you know, you're really going to get the best of the best. The SEC used to be the same way before they got bigger teams, but I have to digress. I don't know. I could take them out. I might do that next season and just go all in but because when you generally go east and west you tend to play the same teams all the time and the reason i'm kind of doing this is kind of taking a more realistic approach to things to give teams like stanford and cal um and louisville like these are all closer games cal is closer to georgia tech you know louisville they're all closer to cal and stanford smu even you know what i'm saying so We'll leave it as that. We'll leave it as East and West, and we will ball out top stories, upgrade coach. What, see, why do they have that on there twice? That makes no sense. I, I don't get it. All right. Now it is time to set up our custom schedules. Hopefully I didn't skip that. Did I skip that? I don't think I did. Let's hope not. No. Recruiting board, custom schedules. This will be the last thing that I'll do. We're still, we are still ranked number one, 87 overall. We got an 89 overall offense and defense. And looky, 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 
They scheduled us as the AFLAC kickoff game against Texas A&M. We opened up last season against Texas A&M, so that's really cool. And then we, we start conference play. We got uh, Florida State at Dote Campbell Stadium. That's going to be a road game for us. Last time we played Florida State, they beat us. We're hoping to get revenge right now. And then we got Liberty at Gerald J. Ford Stadium. Yes, sir. And then Arizona, I'm okay with that, you know. Um, they went six and seven last year and then FCS Southeast, we got three, four back-to-back -back home games. I, I, oh man, I don't know how to feel about that. We have UConn on the map. We got North Carolina, California, Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, Louisville and Stanford. So they actually did keep the schedules to where we're playing the teams in the East only. Um, I want to look at Virginia Tech's schedule because I want to make sure that they are playing um, Virginia. And I don't know if they'll show it to us. No, we have to actually look at the schedules and we can't do that right now because I'm in custom schedules, which is fine. Um, strength of schedule wise, you got one, two, three, four, five ranked teams. Oh, that's going to be weird. We have a crap ton of home games. Look at this. The majority of our games are at home. I mean, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven home games. That is a lot of home games, which means next year we're going to be playing on the road a lot. Uh, but that helps us in getting our stadium up to the top 10. We're still a four-star radio program. I don't know why we didn't move up especially after winning the national championship to at least a four and a half, but I am not going to argue. I'm thinking about changing these games to have, I want to kind of have some more difficult games and I do want to mix it up, but they generate the schedule. So I'll let them, uh, you have Alabama, you have Auburn. Who else is ranked? Florida is ranked number two. I kind of like a tougher schedule and something different, but I might just leave it how it is because the ponies are, or, I mean, it doesn't matter. We're still highly ranked and we make the playoffs. It doesn't matter your rank. You're still going to go to the national championship. If you make it to the national championship, it doesn't matter your rank in that regard. Uh, but we got ranked schools on, on the schedule. North Carolina, Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech. So I can't change these anyway. We got a bye week there. Uh, UConn. I could give us a week zero game if I changed one of these. But I think I'm going to leave that. Only thing I would change is probably playing in one of those other stadiums. But no, we'll we'll leave the schedule as is. That will be, oh, I don't want to change that. We'll leave it as is. That'll be fine. Discard any changes. We didn't change anything, but just in case I accidentally did, um, we'll do that. I'm going to populate my recruiting board, and I'll be right back. Actually, guys, I want y'all to see this because, oh my goodness, we got some five-star guys that are interested in the program. Look at that. A halfback, power back, definitely. Gomez is a field general. I don't mind that. I would like a scrambler, but I'm not going to complain. Um, and you can see the interest as well as the team need. Like, this is so cool. We got one, two, three, four, five five stars who are interested in coming to SMU and that is dope and I did this to put the best guys overall for my team needs um quarterback he's a scrambler right there so we'll add him and right tackle this is how you get the best players that are interested in your program from jump um tight end wide receiver and I'll look at this stuff later another quarterback field general uh, we'll probably add him actually because that quarterback's room is going to be pretty thin, pretty thin, pretty thin. And we will add them all up. I don't need to put too many quarterbacks. Right outside linebacker, power back, left end, definitely need one of those. Right guard, uh, left end, left outside linebacker, and right tackle. Let's see, I got enough left ends. Let's add another right tackle, a strong safety. Uh, and there we go, our recruiting board is full. So let's go look at our prospect board and let's go ahead and offer everybody scholarships. And I will, yeah, let's go ahead and offer everybody scholarships. 
you know, I miss the old days of NCAA 14 where a guy would be so interested in your program that as soon as you offered him a scholarship, he just jumped at the opportunity, dude. That was so cool. And we already have a deal breaker. Look at that. We can't offer him because of playing time. And this is actually the scrambler position rank. But you know what? That's fine. You don't want to compete for a position? Then hit the portal. Let's let's just scout him just to see because, you know, I may... Well, I can't even scout him because we're locked out because I've already offered too many quarterbacks a position. But that's fine. You know what? You don't want to compete for a spot, then you can hit the portal, Jack. We do not care around here. We are trying to win ball games. And that's crazy. It's like, you know, do these recruits in real life know what these schools are recruiting? How many quarterbacks or running backs that they're recruiting that they're looking at? I guess you can tell. Um, as far as offered scholarships, because all you have to do is go to 24 seven sports or something like that. And you can see, uh, who's offered what recruits. So I guess the, they do have knowledge of that to answer my own question. And we got a thousand hours and it is the bye week, but that's still a good number to be able to go through and do all of this. All right. I don't want to add a prospect right now. Um, Give me just a second, guys. I'll be right back. I don't want to put all that on there. All right, so we've got our recruiting done. Our schedule is set up. Top stories. You're looking at the Heisman race. We don't have anybody on that list. Noah is from Arizona. He is a legit guy. I've seen his work, man. It's going to be fun to see that. Um, 95 overall, 89 throwing power. We're going to have to go against him later this year um and that's just the Heisman guys right there man this is gonna be fun they got a good running back at A&M it's gonna be fun to play against them in week one so the dynasty is set up for year three man year three and already we got some guys who are grown in interest in us and SMU Hackler who is a strong safety he's number 11 in his position they have already grown in interest. And no, actually, this is the bye week. So recruiting wise, oh, man, this is going to be interesting. I'm really going to have to. We have moved up his ladder. Guys, we were number nine before we offered him a scholarship. Now we're all the way up to number three. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But anyway, guys, I'm going to end the video there, man. I, what I plan on trying to do is record each of my games and then, um, oh man, are we going to have to edit them to break them down and stuff like that? Or should we just do a montage kind of like Bordeaux kind of does? I don't know, man. Anyway, that's all I got for right now, man. Let's go into year three. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.